Okay, hello everyone. I'm Chen Huacai from China. Since my colleague Lu Jiaming and me are attending virtually, and uh, our oral English is uh, very terrible. So this session will be represented by our partner, Wang Xuerui. Thank you. Oh, and <coughs> can you hear me? Oh, okay, okay. So, um, uh, for this talk, uh, this talk is a long arc, what we'll do next. And uh, um, <coughs> uh, I think I'll first uh, uh, begin with who we are. Okay, so we're, I, I'm this guy, I'm this second guy. Uh, and <laughs> the person just speaking is uh, uh, Chen Huacai, which is uh, the Arc Long Arc maintainer. And me, uh, I'm a Gen2 developer, Arc Long Arc reviewer among you know, countless other roles in the community. And uh, I do all of this uh, as a hobby. So I'm very proud to be the hobbyist hanging around. Yeah. Okay, so let's get. So what is Long Arc? So <clears throat> uh, according to the introductory commit, it's a new risk ISA, a bit like MIPS or risk five. Yeah, it, 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 it indeed is. Um, it's basically uh, very similar to RISC-V and when you look at its user land programs, but um, its privileged architecture has a lot of the reminiscences of MIPS. Uh, and here are some numbers. There are three ISA subsets, the LA32 reduced standard and LA64. There are four privilege levels, much like the four rings of x86. Yeah, uh, and like many, the common risk architectures, there are 32 GPRs, 32 FPR or vector registers, and eight floating point condition code registers like MIPS. And there are many models uh, currently available or is planned to come on the market, including the 3A5000, 3C5000, uh, 3C5000L, 2K1000LA, 2K0500, etc. Um, uh, I think next year they will have the 3A6000 available, which is a talk upgrade with microarchitecture updates, uh, and that will be more performant. For further information, you could check out the official docs or check out my unofficial FAQ. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> You can actually um, download the slides and, and click on those. Yeah, so I'm not uh, producing the, reproducing the links here. Uh, and by the way, I think um, many, uh, uh, maybe some, uh, some of my fellow Chinese friends are watching online. And you could go to the uh, LPC uh, presentation detail page and download a Chinese language version of this slide. Yeah. <clears throat> so what we have done, uh, first of all, I will give you an overview of upstream status of Long Arc and uh, the current status of upstream kernel. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, as of today, essential support is mostly upstreamed. Uh, Bin utils, GCC, Linux, GLibc, uh, go lib ffi lib online system d etc uh, these are all done um, uh, many are already released in attack uh, uh, version and some are still awaiting but uh, it shouldn't be far and some some of the most uh, prominent <coughs> missing pieces like rlvm rust and muscle are st um porting is already on the way and the patches have already emerged. Uh, for lab set comp, I think um, the patches uh, already um, <coughs> done and just waiting for the official stamp. Yeah. And <coughs> it's ELF PS ABI just got revised slightly incompatibly. More on this later. And the overall ABI is stable. And multiple distros are already available. Uh, we have Gen 2. Uh, Arc Linux and um, two efforts of Arc Linux actually, and Slackware and the CLFS book and a reference CLFS build for it. Yeah, 
actually, I should be presenting on this Longarc laptop right now. Yeah, this is one of the Longarc laptop. It's an engineering sample that I got. Yeah, and it's running Gen 2 and XFCE. Yeah, um, and we have ported the uh, LibreOffice to it. So in theory, in theory, we'd be able to present on this machine, but, uh, oh, uh, the keyboard is having some problems, so I couldn't lock, unlock it. Anyway, <clears throat> yeah, if I, um, if I was able to uh, present you its uh, interface, it, it'll be just LibreOffice opening this slide. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so what's the status of the upstream kernel? Um, uh, in its current shape, it supports UEFI plus ACPI systems, and uh, we've uh, managed to push the ARC support and the, uh, stabilize the UAPI into v5.19. Um, and sorry for the rush, um, if some of you, uh, some of the reviewers are there. Yeah. <coughs> sorry about that. And um, for the this. Uh, merge this past merge window. Uh, we have ready IRQ chip, PCI, and provisional ACPI definitions. Also, some minor additions like uh, VDS or guest CPU, uh, something else. And um, but for the next uh, merge window, we should have most things ready, and this version is gonna mostly work out of the box. We have uh, the ACPI 6.5 finally released, so we uh, switched to the final definitions and proper EFI boot support and eBPF JIT, queued spring lock support and perf events. And there are more to come. The <clears throat> there are still some features in the works such as proper suspend and resume support and the uh, uh, sound support for the uh, LS 7A chipset. Um, and many more. <clears throat> okay, so this. Yeah, sure. Microphone. Yeah. Uh, so I'm a maintainer of uh, 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 restartable sequences, the RSEC system yeah. call. So the get CPU VDSO becomes not really useful once you get a JLBC 2.35, which enables uh, restartable sequence and use the current CPU ID field uh, that it's a, it's a load, right? So their get get CPU is just loading that value from user space. So, uh, and they use that on ARM64 because, in, because they don't have even have the get CPU uh, VDSO. So, and so, so based on this, I mean, that may not be used much. Uh, the other point there related to a restartable sequence system call. So I noticed that long arc as the have RSEC uh, defined in their in the kconfig. However, the self test, the kernel self self test code uh, that needs to be specialized for this architecture has never been provided. So there's no testing of that system call on the architecture. So I was wondering, do you have a timeline to provide the, the this test code? Uh, because this is kind of assembly that is long arc specific, and I, I don't have any knowledge of that assembly, right? Uh, so, so I would recommend either a, so, uh, pushing a patch that removes the Avar sex report from long arc, or having a, a, a short timeline to provide this testing. Um, I think I've just uh, seen uh, commit adding long arc into the K self test mechanism. Uh, recently, in one of the uh, development branches of Long Sounds Fork, so this is uh, this construction may well already be in progress. Very well, very well. Thank you. Okay, next. <laughs> so we'll get quickly to what we'll do next, and um, yeah, <clears throat> you know we have the uh, old world pro problem, and we. Uh, we are going to talk about support for alternative boot protocols, the way forward. Um, uh, we originally planned to uh, talk about the way forward for generic EFI Z boot flow because uh, this question popped up uh, when we were trying to push 
the EFI stub support for long arc upstream. Uh, but uh, um, in the coming uh, one month or so, ArtB already um, finished all of this. And uh, the code is uh, about to appear in uh, version 6.1. Yeah, so this is also data and we won't cover it today. And kudos to RGB, yeah. Okay, so let's begin with the old world problem. <coughs> uh, basically, uh, we'll start with the background and talk about the various incompatibilities uh, all over there. And uh, finally, we will try to uh, provide ways forward. Yeah, uh, not all of them, uh, is feasible or uh, even sane to implement. So that's why I'm bringing those approaches here for discussion. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, this is the fact. Earliest uh, long arc ports were basically copy paste of MIPS code with mass replace strings. Uh, uh, so we have even have little gems like a Bogo long arc and LBT long arc for that. LBT long arc means long sum binary translation. So they uh, appear to uh, be able to translate from long arc to long arc when they basically, uh, you know, they they obviously mean meant MIPS here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that typo was quickly fixed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this is all rushed for an apparently non technical reasons. And they have to and switch away from MIPS um, in a relatively short time frame. And they were forced to uh, just uh, quickly put something out so uh, projects, uh, so products could come to the market quicker. And uh, maybe uh, I, I'm not a LOSA employee, so um, I might not be a, in a position to comment on this, but this is the fact. And uh, obviously this is not gonna fly. So after meeting some stern faces and objection from the community, uh, uh, they finally, eventually, they switched to the new ABI, which is largely modeled after that of RISC-V. Uh, uh, between the two ABIs, the ELFPS ABI and calling convention are mostly unaffected, fortunately, but other parts, not so much and there are differences and incompatibilities at every layer, which I will detail below, yeah. So starting with the PSABI, <coughs> we, have, uh, we have different relocation types at first. Uh, so in the old world, as we call it, uh, they use uh, stack machine relocs, yeah. The reloc relocations are calculated with the stack machine model. Um, uh, by looking at the bin utils uh, sources, uh, it seems only RL78 and RX uh, architectures are using uh, this style of relocs. Uh, and I don't think it was a, uh, <coughs> I don't think it was a coincidence because, uh, coincidence because uh, both of these two arcs come from Renaissance. Um, but, <coughs> Apparently, this is not um, going to be uh, sustainable in the long term because uh, stack machine, uh, the computation, <coughs> the computation <coughs> like this. Um, how do I zoom out? Okay, not like so. Oh, this one. Zoom in, zoom in, zoom in. Zoom in. Um, it's like this for one single, uh, this PC at U12i is like a UI PC. It's exactly uh, like risk vibes a UI PC, by the way. Uh, to calculate uh, one relocation, we need uh, this much relocation records. It's push, add, push, push, add, push, shift right, push, shift left, sub, push, shift left, push, shift right. And then I finally pop into the instruction slot. So this is, uh, quite insane, huh? Uh, yeah, and this is absolutely not gonna fly because um, the modern linkers like LLVMs, LLD, and mode, um, they cannot uh, accept uh, such a serialized uh, processing because um, 
in processing those re relocations, you obviously cannot have any parallelism. And, and this is not gonna be architecturally uh, accommodated by the linker projects. So they have finally uh, switched to a classic, more classical style relocations like this. Uh, here you can see it's uh, more rational, yeah. So this part is going to require some modifications to various downstream projects uh, like uh, the Linux kernel because it needs to load modules and the Grub2 because it has some modules too and the uh, LibC support, uh, of course, yeah. <clears throat> and we also have uh, a marker and, and the released uh, bit domain of eFlex field. And uh, so with the very recent New World toolchains, I'm actually, I don't even know when, whether the patch, it, patch has even been posted. So it's supposed to be zero one for very recent objects and zero for old world objects. So, yeah. And this is about the PSABI. And then there's the firmware level incompatibility, incompatibilities. Um, the old world UEFI has uh, all its pointers in virtual addresses, while the new world has um, physical addresses as with everyone else. <coughs> um, it might be the case that the original scheme was devised uh, because the kernel expects the same direct mapping window config as uh, the uh, firmware already set up. So it might save uh, literally three to six instructions. So, so in the five spec, it's it's for all architectures mandated that the PA equals the VA, right? So there's always a one-to-one -one mapping. So why would they even be different? Um, <coughs> uh, actually, it's a direct uh, mapping means. Um, uh, you look at the VA's prefix, and if the prefix matches the DM, DMW config, then the rest of the VA gets interpreted as the uh, appropriately offsetted uh, PA. So uh, it, in a way, it is the PA, but uh, it needs the prefix. So, <coughs> and I believe the kernel is still using DMW config today because um, this way uh, I think uh, access to user memory uh, might be more performant. But doing so precludes the possibility of supporting MMFD secret. So they are uh, trying to, I believe they are working on uh, replacing this uh, DMW uh, kernel scheme with the <coughs> proper TLB mapped kernel. Um, I believe they were working on this, but it, but it will require some more work. So not in the immediate future. <clears throat> okay. And uh, the ACPI tables uh, sh shipped systems with the old firmware have different and incompatible, inc incompatible layouts of their ACPI tables. Um, yeah, so <clears throat> Some end users may remember having to um, carry a uh, carry an ACPI table patch in their init RD enable uh, in order to be able to boot. And uh, finally, for the boot protocol, uh, for the old world, they simply carried their boot protocol back in the MIP states. Uh, forward to Lomac, so it's the structured boot params interface or BPI for short. <coughs> it's for OW, uh, old world and early iterations of new world kernel. So this is all translated via a special grub tool. Yeah, so um, from this illustration, you can see the, um, the new world boot flow is a lot more uh, normal, yeah. And you really don't want to go this way, which is why it got shut <coughs> shut down in the first place. Okay, uh, then there's the UAPI difference. So I, I need, may need to go a bit quicker. Uh, the number of signals is this <coughs> doubled in the old world, which is the same as MIPS. 
Well, it's the same as everyone else. And we have deprecated some, some of the older syscalls with the modern variants. And we have uh, slight differences um, for Petrius and C context. So <clears throat> LabC and the various uh, low level pieces need to be adapted as well. And we have this different LabC symbol version and LDSO path. So how do we unite the two worlds if you want to do it? Uh, the, goal is, the goal is obviously digital preservation, uh, possibly by allowing OW binaries on new world kernel. Uh, so the first question is, do we even want to go this way? Because um, but first of all, old world is bound to, get, bound to go away and uh, the, um, a full old world system could be emulated with a full system emulation or with the wine-like approach where everything's nicely isolated. We might not want hybrid systems after all. And uh, uh, we might want to run new world kernel on either flavors of firmware. So we might have to uh, push BPI support upstream <coughs> if we decide to go uh, to support this. And for this, uh, I think we do care for those early systems to uh, get uh, updated firmware. <coughs> uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, we do care for those systems when not getting get those uh, updated firmware, so users are, aren't left uh, unattended. Okay, so basically, um, I plan to go through this real quick because uh, actually uh, in, in the recent days when I was uh, busy um, polishing this, these slides, I think it might not be a good idea to even try um, supporting the hybrid sysroot case. So we might be able to divide by the syscall boundary or by some internal mechanism, like uh, 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 trying to tell if a um, process is speaking OW by looking at its first the sig proc mask call uh, to see what number of signals it expects. I don't think that this is going to be upstreamable. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, <laughs> and then we have to handle cross world execs. <laughs> so, this is becoming really tricky. So, I think I'll just ignore this slide. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's all, all in the PPT, and we could all continue the discussion on mailing lists. Yeah. And finally, for alternative boot protocols, um, <clears throat> why are the boot protocols matter? First, for BPI compatibility with those early uh, hardware, and for enabling resource constrained use cases uh, to uh, boot via DT. Uh, to allow vanilla Linux on those uh, small devices. Finally, there is, um, of course, the Floss firmware, like Core Boot. Uh, so we can get to provide users more choices, which is always, always better. <clears throat> yeah, for BPI compatibility, we might be able to uh, design some clean shim, uh, like the, this three approaches that I have illustrated. A BPI is basically um, a decorated uh, an indirect UEFI boot um, <coughs> with the UEFI table and ACTI table uh, in some different location than standard UEFI and new world boot flow. And the memory map, yeah, memory map is differently shaped. So we could uh, shim at the uh, inside the kernel or we could uh, make a special grub tool or make our own UEFI shim that translates old world UEFI to new world UEFI. Okay, <clears throat> um, but uh, yeah, maybe the path of least resistance might be the third approach, yeah. So I'm still <clears throat> just showing the various possibilities, but I think uh, we <laughs> might f eventually go this route. And finally, this is the there's the DT boot 
uh, question. This is likely doable without much friction because DT is already some accepted standard, uh, only that it lacks standardization for this architecture. Uh, but uh, today I don't have much information to share because both Lonesome presenters are not working on DT kernels as far as I know. So to the Lonesome people working on this, uh, who might be watching this uh, show, uh, no, no, watching this presentation, um, I need <coughs> I need to say to you, com communicate, communicate, and communicate. Yeah, important things get to said thrice. Yeah. Uh, finally, acknowledgments to my employer and Lonsa and all the community power who's been supporting us. Yeah, including uh, Gen2 developers Steel Fridge and Sam and Flygold, Hoge Langley, Forces, uh, Kiligami, and uh, Revi, Xi Ruo Yao, and others in the Telegram Lonsa user group. And of course, countless others that I might have uh, forgotten to mention. Yeah, and that's all. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so I'm a maintainer of the user space or CU library. Uh, there's been a long Zoom support patch provided to sent to me maybe a year ago. I asked, asked back a question about the architecture. I read the architecture manual. There does not appear to be any byte-wise and two-byte uh, atomic instructions that I could find in the manual. However, the patch enabled support in my library for those instructions, and, and those are tested, and somehow the test might have passed on someone's system. So I asked, is, are there such? Uh, so I replied to the, 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 the patch author, and never got a, first a clarification on whether Longsoon has one and two byte atomic instructions. And second, I mean, has there been tests done? Or can I receive a board to do my testing in my own test rack? So, so those are my questions. Oh. OK, so actually, your first question, whether Lonak has one, two bytes atomics, subword atomics, uh, the answer is no. But uh, there um, might be a way forward, because uh, actually, I think uh, for the next presentation by Guo Ren, uh, he's going to uh, present uh, uh, the LLSC architecture uh, emulating the subword atomics with the uh, forward progress guarantee. Uh, actually, uh, if the microarchitecture assists, uh, have some assistance, this is actually doable, uh, even with RRSC emulation of subword atomics. Uh, also, but, but in my case, those are not needed, but the, the architecture code needs to express the right thing. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, for the latter question, uh, you mean test platforms or access to some test environment? Uh, I believe uh, Lonsan is happy to provide that. Um, we can uh, help arrange it uh, after the meeting. Thank you. Yeah. He earned the rights to the chat that uh, supporting multiple Cisco ABIs for all the new world seems entirely possible. And he's uh, ready to help figuring it out how. Still, he would suggest not upstreaming that patch, but instead keeping it as a northern patch uh, for the old all the binaries. Uh, how do I see the chat in this? So we can connect to this. Yeah. Supporting multiple Cisco ABIs for old world and new world seems entirely possible. Still, suggest not upstreaming that patch, but instead keeping it as add-on patch that only gets by to users that still need old, old world binaries. Yeah, sure. Uh, and I think, um, uh, first of all, we, we could continue this discussion uh, after the meeting on the mailing list. And uh, uh, yeah. I agree on not upstreaming that, but de depending on the communication uh, between us, the community, and uh, closed source vendors, uh, this problem might simply go away. So we don't have to care. Yeah. I think we'll have to cut it here. So 